Hello and welcome to this week's intermediate class. I am Sarah and this week we'll be focusing on uh, posture and how your posture can help with your general technique when you're dancing. So this is a class that you can take solo but hopefully the things that you'll get from it will not only be useful in solo but in other dances such as Lindy Hop. I want to talk about why you should care about your posture and um, ways that you can improve your posture, that kind of thing. So we'll start off with why should you care about posture? One of the things is that it helps you feel the music better. So um, particularly with the posture that we have when we're doing uh, swing dances, it's very loose, it's a nice bend in the knee, and so we can feel that pulse a lot easier. We can get the swing into it a bit more comfortably and we can kind of feel the groove when we're walking around, we're moving. We can actually move around and show, well, express the what we're hearing in the music, basically. If you are dancing with a partner, it's really good for your connection, um, particularly things in the upper body will help with your communication between you and your partner. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the upper body parts. Um, it's good for looking after your body. Your body is important, you only got one. You want to look after it so you can dance for forever, basically. Um, so there's a lot of things when we talk about posture that we say to make sure that you're looking after your body. So particularly things like engaging the core, um, making sure that you're not slouching over. These are to protect your back, your shoulders, um, all the various joints and things that kind of just you know degrade over the years. So we want to try and preserve them as long as we can. Um, and the last reason that I have here anyway, there's probably more, um, but another big reason is aesthetic. If that's something you care about, it doesn't have to be. Um, this dance is all about feeling and communicating, so um, how you look is kind of up to you. Um, if you are someone that cares about how you look, particularly if you're a performer, you're competing a lot, that kind of thing, um, that how you look is important and having good posture can make a huge difference to how something looks when you're dancing it. So for example, say, I don't know why I'm picking fall off the log because that's a move I'm terrible at, but if you do it with, say one posture could be this, and go ba do ba 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 da ba ba compared to ba 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 da ba ba. Um, the second one just looks more exciting, at least I think so. It just looks more relaxed and you can do more with it. Like I feel like I've got more freedom to express more things. So it's about what's important to you. So let's talk about how to find good posture. I'm going to actually take my jacket off. It's kind of warm today. Um, I have EUSDS merch underneath EUSDS merch. You're welcome. So the way we quite often teach our beginners to find their posture is to Start with your feet about hip width apart and then just jump and land and then keep a nice soft bend in the knees and this is basically where you want to be. So that's one way of doing it, it's a nice quick way of thinking about it and being able to visualise um, that bend and that bounce because you've already jumped. Um, another way that I kind of, that really, sorry, one way you're thinking about the can I change the way that I think about my posture when I'm dancing? Um, particularly because I come from a ballet background and a uh, more classical background, so my posture is a bit more upright. Um, but when I started to learn how to do things like squats, um, that really helped me with my posture in Lindy Hop. Um, so I'm gonna talk with a little bit of what I've learned from that and bring that into our Lindy Hop and Soul Jazz swing posture. So, we're starting the same way as we did with our jump and land way. We're going to have our feet parallel, so that means they're facing the front. And feet hip width apart, so find your hips down. There they are. <laughs> um, next thing I want to think about is the abs. We talk a lot about having the core engaged, or the abs engaged. Um, abs being abdominal muscles. Um, but what do we mean by engaging muscles? Um, we don't mean, like, we absolutely don't want lots of tension. Um, so, 
you need to be able to still breathe really comfortably. That's the big thing about engaging the abs too hard. So if you have tension in your abs, you find it's kind of hard to talk and to breathe. Um, when we say engage, we mean more just a light hold. So if you think about how it feels when you laugh or when you cough, um, make sure there's no one around if you are doing the coughing way, but laughing works just the same. So when you do like a ha, you'll feel your abs engage. That's what that, that's the feeling we want to have. So just a light, a light hold in the abdominal region. So we have our feet parallel, hips width apart. We have our abs engaged. Next, I want to talk about the shoulders. Shoulders, super important, particularly if we are going to be dancing with partner and using connections, hand-to-hand -hand connections, um, and also side-to-side -side connections. Yeah, basically all your connections in Lindy Hop that involve arms, hands, that kind of thing. This is super useful, um, but it's also useful aesthetically. Again, I'll talk about that later for solo stuff. So with our shoulders, let's start just by rolling them up and back. So do some little shoulder rolls or little circles. Just up, back and down. Up, back and down. You might find you have quite tight shoulders. Um, I tend to, particularly if I haven't been dancing, which I, I have been dancing today. Um, but you might want to just spend some time doing this to help loosen up. Um, and when you feel ready, do one last up, back and down. And that's where you want to be. So this is where we talk about shoulders being engaged. So our shoulder muscles, uh, these ones here, you might want to think about putting the shoulders into the pockets or yeah, put the shoulders in the pockets. So that's them down and in the pockets. You'll find the, at least for me, my arms kind of naturally just land here. Um, I can take them down and I can move them around but this is just where they sort of naturally land if I have this posture. So we have our feet hip width apart, we have our core engaged, we have our shoulders up, back and down. Next I want to think about the head, neck and upper body in general. Um, so one way of thinking about this, generally what you might hear is lengthening through the upper body or lengthen through the torso. Um, there's a couple of ways to go about this. You might want to think about bringing your chest forward. Um, that might naturally have already happened when you took your shoulders back, um, but it is good for your back to also just bring your chest forward a little bit. Um, it helps engage the shoulder muscles again, which is again, good for supporting your back. Um, the other way is to think about someone has a string and they've stuck it into the top of your head. It's a really strong string, doesn't hurt. And they are pulling it up yeah. So you can either think about the string just being your head, like at the top of your head, or you can think about it connecting all the way down your vertebrae, down all the way to the back. And then, I don't know if you can see the difference, but the difference between here to here. Maybe try that a couple of times, just take a relaxed spot, and then bring the chest forward, and bring the, uh, the string up. Yeah, so we want to keep that. This, again, really important, if, particularly if you do get back pains like I do. Um, trying to keep shoulders engaged, back engaged, abs engaged, and everything nice and lifted. The next step from here, yeah. So this is the squat portion of it. This is where we get our bend. Um, rather than thinking of bending my knees, what I do is think about hinging from the hips. So if you find your hips around here, um, or alternatively, you can think about your butt and you just want to take the butt back. So rather than just bending the knees, which you can see leaves me quite upright, I'm taking the hips back. Yeah. So maybe try that a few times, so being up straight, again keeping everything, the upper body, up and straight, and then hinging from the hips. But it looks a bit odd when you do it like this, I'm aware, don't worry. Um, 
If you want to practice those in front of a mirror, record yourself. Um, don't need to show anyone, but it's quite useful to see yourself sometimes and you can see maybe that your back actually isn't straight. Yeah, this is obviously not a full squat. Um, this is just sort of like a relaxed one. If you are used to squatting and you want to think about going down into the full squat and then bringing it up a little bit, that's fine. Um, one way that the Decavitas taught me to, well not me specifically, but have taught a class that I was in um, about how to hold your posture is that you're sitting on like a bar stool, so it's just like a little perch. So you're not like all the way down, you're not trying to sit on the chair, you're just sitting on a little bar stool. Yeah. And you'll see as well when I take my upper body, it does go forwards a little bit, but that's just as a result of the butt going back. So I'm not specifically taking my body forward, it just goes very naturally. And also, uh, just as an example of what not to do, we don't want to be leaning back. This is going to really hurt your back in the long run. Um, so keeping your shoulders, your head in line with your shoulders and trying to keep this straight line between your tailbone and the back of your head and the nape of your neck, just all the way up here, trying to keep a straight line up here will be really good for your back and your longevity of being able to dance. Cool. So. I said that I was going to talk about arms, I've mentioned this a couple of times. So, you might have heard about the elastic band method, um, if you've done a lot of Lindy Hop before. So when we have our shoulders back and down, and in the pockets, in the sockets, I forget which one it is, you might have heard that people talk about having an elastic band that connects your elbow to your waist, or to your ribcage, and when you're dancing, you want to think about being connected to that elastic band at all times and so you don't really move any further than this this is kind of your range of movement and this is good for your connection if you're in a partner blah, blah, blah. being able to keep this here it's a bit odd without a partner um but yeah but if you are dancing solo jazz or any kind of solo dancing it's a nice way to start thinking about your styling and how you look when you're dancing. So yes, when you see a lot of big ones, they'll big ones, big, big name dancers. Um, they'll do really big arms. Everything will be really flashy, and that is a really cool way to make your dancing more flashy. But if you start big, it's a lot easier to be messy. Um, and a lot of them, I think it was Seth from Mirsch who gave me this advice. Um, talking about starting with your elbows in and starting all your movements just dancing with your elbows in here and getting used to just keeping the arms really small seeing how much movement you can get from this range of movement so my elbows are not moving at all where they are but I'm still getting some nice arms in there. And it looks kind of neater, I guess. And then as you get more comfortable and more used to that, you can then start making your arms go out from there. So again, thinking about an elastic band, maybe a slightly more mobile elastic band than the one we use for the Lindy Hop exercise. But maybe one that kind of extends to here and then it pulls you back in. So you can get nice bends in your arm and it's sort of, you go through bends to an extension, which generally makes your lines look a lot nicer and just looks a lot nicer in the long run. It also feels nicer. I find it easier to have my arms, sorry, to connect my arms with the music if I am a bit more connected within myself. So next thing to talk about, we want to talk about where your weight is when you're dancing. So let's get into our posture. If you want to do the whole, um, the whole way of doing it, what did we do? We did feet hip width apart, core engaged, shoulders up, back and down, upper body, chest forward and up, medallion reaching forward, um, headlong, string through the heads up, and then bend from the butt. So we are here. 
but where is our weight? So I want you to think about where your weight is most on your feet. So which part of your foot are you putting most of your weight on right now? Hopefully it should be distributed between both feet evenly, but I'm talking about like which part of the foot. So the bit that I find is best is the ball of the foot. It's what we call the ball of the foot. It's this squidgy bit. Hopefully that's clear on there. This squidgy bit here. So not the tip of the toes, not the heel, but this squidgy bit. And if you have your weight on there, again, it helps with the music, um, being able to connect and get that bounce because you can even take that into your heels a bit more. But, but you can just rock a bit more with it, which is always a bit nicer. Um, it'll help you moving around more, so it's, it kind of helps your agility and um, trying to do things that the back more dance faster. But, but uh, it's a lot easier to do that on the ball of the foot than say if you had the full flat of the foot and you're trying to step everything. It's just a lot harder to move around and change direction. So being on the ball of the foot is really good for that. Um, another thing about being on the balls of your feet, um, at least I find this, is that it's really good for helping with balance. So if you're someone who struggles with doing one-legged moves and then changing between feet and keeping balance, I find it so much easier if I am on the ball of my foot. But, but uh, and I'm thinking all the time about having keeping my body over that foot so everything's in line rather than stepping out and then going, that's a lot more difficult. Because then you have to bring in counterbalances and oh, it's a lot more to think about. So make it easier on your brain and just take everything with you. But, um, and if you're trying to balance on your heels, that's a lot more difficult. And your toes as well. Um, so if you're on the ball of your foot, and I don't mean you have to stay on the ball of your foot. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it, but if you kind of step on the ball and then the rest of the foot will just come with it. Yeah, but so like padding, like a little cap. I don't know if this is how cats move, but that's how I think they do apparently. Um, just one more thing. Ha, yes. And finally, another reason to keep your weight on the ball of your feet is to make more funky rhythms. Any tapper will tell you that being able to be on the ball of your feet and do things with your heels, you can do more things with your toes, you can just move around a lot more. Um, the bends in the knee will also really help with this. Um, but being able to add in just like a, a random heel at some point, you've got more foot to work with basically. So you can, let's see, you've got like a, Oh, stomp off. That's the one I was thinking of. So if you've done tacky annies, you've likely, you likely have seen people do a stomp off at the start of it. Um, if you have the weight on the ball of the foot, you can then lead with the heels. So I'll show that from the side. So my weight is around here and then I can go, uh, um, which means I can make more noise, which is fun. Maybe not so much for my neighbours, but in general while I'm dancing, it's fun to be able to be like, get up. And you can make it more dramatic with your movement, so that's uh, useful. Um, at this point, I'm going to recommend watching Baby Lawrence, I think was the name. Um, he's a, a hoofer. So basically hoofers are tap dancers who focus a lot more on like rhythms than arms and things like that. Um, there's a video that I'll link in the description below that is Baby Lawrence and he then is joined by Sammy Davis Jr. And the two of them are hooping and it's really cool. Um, they have some really cool rhythms and like you can see just like where their feet is, um, how much of a bend they have and how that helps them getting the jumps and the cool rhythms. And yeah, it's really cool. So I would recommend checking it out. So the final thing, I've mentioned it just there with tap dancing, um, is the bend in your knees and why it's important. Um, we've already mentioned that it's, it helps you with your, your pulse and things like that. But again, aesthetically, it can be really good for making more interesting shapes. So I'm gonna use the swivel, the good old classic swivel 
as our example for this one. So the difference between straight-legged swivels, well, kind of straight-legged, it's pretty hard to do them fully straight-legged, but... Whereas if I add more of a bend into it, the... So you can see the my feet are the same distance apart when I'm doing that. Yeah, and then with the bend, so feet are exactly the same distance apart, but it looks bigger, and that's just because I'm getting lower. But it will take a toll on your thighs. You will get tired, um, but that's what training's for. <laughs> Um, but that's really useful if you're in a crowded space and you want to make moves look really big but you don't have the space to stretch out. So you can make them look big even in a small space but having a bend helps that. <laughs> um, so I'd recommend practicing that if you're familiar with swivels, even if you're not. Um, go find out how to do swivels first and then try them out with less of a bend and with more of a bend. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. And that's something I recommend that you try with all moves and all of the things that we've talked about today. Um, taking moves and trying to make them smaller, trying to make them bigger. Um, maybe if you're doing a routine, like stop yourself at some point and go, how is my posture? Like, how's it doing? And then think about these different parts. Maybe you've let your, your core uh, disengage. Maybe your shoulders have come forward, maybe you've come up straight like I always do and I watch myself in videos and I'm upright. Um, yeah, just being aware and taking some time to ask your body like, am I doing this? Are you okay? <laughs> um, maybe if you do care about the aesthetics and how you look when you're dancing, dance in front of a mirror, uh, record yourself dancing and you can or ask other people for feedback as well if they are happy to give you that but sometimes it really helps to be able to watch yourself and then you can sort of pick apart the things that you want to work on and then how you can make moves look even better one last thing that i would like to recommend before i wrap everything up um something i found really useful is doing yoga classes um and i know katie is a big advocate for dancers doing pilates um all these things really help with body awareness, um, knowing how your body should feel, and strengthening areas of muscles that can help support the rest of your body so that when you're moving, um, you're putting yourself at less risk, basically. Um, it's all about safety. And those kind of classes are really good for just getting to know yourself, I guess. Um, there's plenty of stuff online. You can find things on YouTube. Just type in like beginners yoga, beginners Pilates, um, and hopefully you'll find things, but if you can, if you do have the, the means to support teachers, um, there's also plenty of Zoom classes and things going on at the minute, you can probably just Google things, I'm sure people have recommendations that they'll put in the comments, but there's plenty of resources on YouTube if you need them. So I think that's everything for the class today, I'm um, sorry there wasn't too much dancing, or not really enough music either, um, but this is a very talky based class. Um, and I hope that some of these exercises were useful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, again, I'll be in the chat. So feel free to throw them at me and I will do my best to respond. Um, but yeah, I think it's the mixed class next, so I'll hand you over to them. But thank you very much for joining me.